gather here in these places. Lord, we come to you and we worship you this morning. And we just wish that you would be with us as we go through our week, Lord, as we shine our light and live our lives as you wish for us to live with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
good morning. Welcome to Lake Park United Methodist Church. Our first thing we're going to do this morning is Larry Allen, the missions chair, is going to give us a update on this. Thank you, Brother Larry. I, I hope that, uh, I, I know you can hear me, but I hope that the people who are watching can hear me. Um, those of you who know me, which most of you in here do, know that I have a tendency to be long-winded, and Brother Larry said he'll jerk me down from here if he needs to. Okay, I'll try to be as brief as I can be, Brother Larry, I promise. Take a nap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go take a nap on me. Okay, here we go. Um, so since we last had this report, which has been about six weeks ago, I want to make you aware of what the funds that you put in these boxes have, have done. Okay. Um, we have bought school supplies for, for students who came to Vacation Bible School. And also, we provided to, for public school systems in our general area that children who did not have the ability to, to buy the supplies uh, that we provided them for. We had, there were 56 backpacks, which Audrey was able to procure somehow or another. And all we had to buy were the supplies to put inside those, those backpacks. Uh, so there were 56 of those. Uh, we received, already received, two thank you notes from school systems saying thank you, thank you for what you've done for, for our students uh, that did not have the ability to do what you did for them. Uh, also, um, we, we provided snacks for vacation Bible school. You said, well, that's not a whole lot, but that's something for sure. We provided uh, water for the adults and the students and the, and the, the participants that wanted water. We provided soft drinks in the form of Coca-Colas and Pepsis and Dr. Dr. Peppers and on and on. And also Capricorn, uh, Cap, I think it Capricorn, those little pouches you put a, put a, uh, a, a, a straw in that they, they like those. And we also provided chips. And all of, the, all of that came from, from this little box here. Um, also, uh, I want you to know that uh, um, we are, are trying to, to be a, a helping hand to, to the youth program we have here. And, and I'll be honest with you, some, sometimes people like myself, when they get older and their mind doesn't work as well, you're not as aware of how important the youth are to the church. The youth is the lifeblood of the church. And, and we need to support you, Brian. And, and, and I'm telling you, uh, as long as, as I'm able to get up and walk around and Julie's able to pilfer through drink boxes at, at Second Harvest, we're going to have you some cold drinks, okay, and water and whatever else that we can provide for you. Um, uh, praying hands, he says, and, and I, I reported to you six weeks ago about the migrant camp in, in, uh, in, in there in Eccles County. Uh, at one time, they had about 150 individuals who were quarantined there. And then there were several churches in the community, not just this community, but the Eccles community and, and the Howell community that, that band together to try to help these people food-wise. And, and, and guess who the leader? We weren't the leader, but guess who the church was that did the most? You're right, Ryan, it was us. And the grandson of 2,600 pounds of food were provided I go all through these boxes. Um, uh, and, and, and I also want to talk to you about praying hands. Praying hands that get our church is, is an ongoing, consistent group that provide food on an ongoing basis to the people in, in and around this community. And they've done this for years. It's, it's under the leadership of, of Martha Scanlon, a woman of, of, of a wonderful heart, and, and she is fully believes in this and supports this with her energy and her efforts. And I want to mention who these people are. Sometimes I'm negligent in, in, in letting people know who people are that are doing things. Uh, Serena Miller, which most of y'all know. Uh, Cynthia Holden, well, we were just recently married to a guy named Alan and she drove him in on it. So Alan is now a, a, an active worker helping praying hand. And of course Sage, who sings on her choir. Uh, Sage Hayes has, has been active since she was probably this big. Uh, and we also have uh, Libby Devers, 
which I all y'all know Libby, and then Mary Margaret. But those are individuals who on a monthly basis have provided food for individuals who need assistance. And it, it's basically through your efforts that this is able to be done. Um, and uh, we also re received a, a donation. Uh, uh, a guy by the name of, 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 of Billy Exum goes to church here. And uh, I did not know Billy, but one day after church, he was in his truck parked next to my truck and he asked me a question. He said, is there anything that you all could use that you can't get? And we have difficulty sometimes getting pasta, you know, spaghetti, um, macaroni, elbow macaroni, that kind of stuff. Uh, we can get meat, we can get spaghetti sauce, and we can get that kind of stuff, but pasta is a problem. And I told him that. He, and he, so he called me and says, how much could you use? Well, I didn't want to seem greedy, so I said, if we could get $100, we could go to Winn-Dixie and buy a whole lot of spaghetti, okay? The next day, he stopped by. I went home and he put in my mailbox a check for $300 and it came from his sister, okay, and her, her name is, is, is Zoe Myers and she's the director of the uh, Family Connections of Cook County. Now Cook County is helping us help people, does that make sense? Isn't that wonderful? And, and, and I'll like forever be, be, be thankful to, 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 to Billy and, and for his help to our, our wonderful outreach ministry and praying hands. Last week I had a conversation with a guy, okay? The guy's in our Sunday school class, and, and, and I wasn't going to be here last Sunday. I said, would you teach Sunday school for me? He said, I'll be glad to. And we were discussing this, that, and other, and he said, let me tell you a situation that happened to me at work. I said, okay, I'm ready to listen to it. He said that the, the office where he works is closed due to coronavirus. And they, he was inside, and, and this lady was beating on the window. And of course, what's going on? So he went to see what was happening. It was, it was a lady that had three children with her. And, and they didn't have anything to eat. He said that the kids were, were, they were hungry, and all he had was a bottle, bottles of water and some you know, crackers, crackers with with, with peanut butter in it. That, that, was, that was a sum total that he had to give these people. And he said the kids didn't take a breath as they were eating, they were so hungry, okay? Well, I told this to somebody else. And that person said, we can't have that, okay? I said, okay, we can't have it. So he gave me a, a check to buy food for Ron Ross and, and his, his individuals that need help on an emergency basis. And with that check, we delivered to Ron Thursday, I guess it was this past week, Ron, 400 pounds of, of staple goods that are going to go to Thomasville to help people who are in need. You say, well, that's a long ways off. I'm going to tell you what. Your missions is outreach, and you just outreach to Thomasville. Okay? Now, let me tell you something that's happened from since then. You see this little jar up here? Okay, he didn't want to take the time to, to, to dump all the change, but the people where he works have started to do a change for change. Okay, and so they're going to be self-sustaining through the number that we have at, at Second Harvest. We're going to be able to purchase things and then give them to Ron and he can in turn give them away at an emergency for individuals who have to have help today. And, and Ron, I appreciate you sharing that with me and I shared it with somebody and he said, next time you come, I'm not going to answer the door. Okay, he said, you're always looking for a dollar. And I said, no, I'm looking for about a hundred dollars, okay? And so, but, you know, we have people in this church like you who are more than willing to, to help. And on behalf of the individuals in Thomasville, Georgia, who are destitute, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Billy, once again for what you've done. Uh, and, uh, and let, me, let me tell you, you say, well, you, you seem to have a passion for this kind of stuff. I do. Okay. How many in here have ever wondered, where is my next meal coming from? Two of them raised their hands. Okay. I remember when I was in the third grade, my mother sent me to the, to the butcher the market. And back in, in, in the early 50s, at that point in time, yes, I'm that old, uh, 
you know, they, they would, the, the, the butcher would buy a, a half of, of, of pork or a quarter of beef and they would, they would butcher it. It didn't come box meat. That makes sense, too. It, 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 it didn't come pre-packaged. They threw it on the shelf. They, they did it and packaged it. Mom said, I want you to go down there and get a ham bone and cabinet it for your dog. I said, okay. So my sister, who I was the babysitter for, she was, she was probably at the time about four years old. So hand in hand, we went down, walked about six or eight blocks to the grocery store and went back to the meat market. And I said, sir, my mama wants me to get a ham bone for my dog. And, and, and my sister said, Bubba, we ain't got no dog. Okay, mama wanted a ham bone to put in the beans that she was going to cook that were going to last us this week. Does that make sense to you? Okay. I know what it's like to be without. And it ain't a pleasant place to be in life, I'm telling you. Okay. So, anyway, uh, uh, we, we provided that for him. And, and, uh, and, there's a, and one other thing I want to mention, Brother Larry, is this. Uh, we have procured a second number for our church at Second Harvest. Praying Hand's primary mission is an ongoing, continued, you know, providing of food. With the second number we just procured is an emergency. If somebody needs something, they can call this church office, and we've got a, a second little place that we can go get something for them. Does that make sense to you? And then we were able to help Ron through this this second number. So you know we're expanding and, and broadening the horizon and, and mission. Okay, and one other thing, I, I went around this morning and. And, and, and I hate to say this to you, I shook hands with some of you, but most of you I hugged. Okay, forgive me, okay. Uh, I'm so glad to see you, I don't know how to act, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, I don't see you very often, and when I do, it, it, and my heart is lifted, does that make sense? I'm going to tell you what, there are people in this church, as we sit here today, maybe watching this, and hear, I pray they can hear what I'm saying. They're afraid to get out. They're lonely, and they wonder, does anybody give a rip, okay? I mean, you get to that point, does anybody care, okay? Well, I, I, and there, there's the second card that came, there was this lady, which none of you happen to know, the lady's got more money than Carter's got liver pills, and he's got lots of liver pills, okay? I took her four cans of soup, well, Julie and I did, because she's a little lady, doesn't have a family, and she's afraid to get out, okay? And so there she is by herself. So we put a note in there. These items were provided to you by Lake Park United Methodist Church. We love you and so does God. Stuck it in there. And lo and behold, here comes the thank you note, okay? So it obviously meant something to her, okay? That, that somebody out there, hey, he knows I'm here. She didn't need that suit. I knew that when, I, when we dropped it off. But she needed somebody to contact her. Somebody to let her know, you are a worthy person and we love you, okay? So I'm, I'm asking that we can do this. I would like to find, start a missions phone call group that we call people in our church or people in our community that, that we know who are out there by themselves that don't have contact once a week. Give somebody a phone call and say, hey, just let you know that, that, that we miss you and we can only wait for this mess to get over with so that we, we can once again embrace the Lord together in, in the house of God. We need to do that, okay? I need eight people. Now, if you ain't going to volunteer, then I'm going to call you and ask you. Let's lay it straight out, okay? I need eight people. And, uh, and, and I've got the directory. And I've been going down checking people I've been to. I mean, Julie, and it, it's an uplifting experience to see people that you, and I can only see them between me and Tammy, and for those of you who can't see where Tammy is, she's 35 feet from me, okay? How you doing? Good to see you. Brought you a can of soup. I know you don't need it, but I want you to know we love you, okay? And can't wait for this mess to get over with. You do that once a month or so, people appreciate it. But if somebody gets a call once a week, it, it would mean more to them than you can imagine. And mission needs to do something like that, to reach out to people. Brother Larry, I apologize for my alone. Um, 
Oh, how many people have, 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 have missions, a missions number served? We have served 38 people on an emergency basis. And that's not anything like praying hands does. But on an emergency basis, we've served 38 people. Thank you, Brother Larry. To me, in this time like we're in now, it's important that the church here, many people are like, what's the church doing? Is the church being the church? Yes, we are. We're reaching other places that we probably never would have thought about going. And real quick before you say, man, you like Thomasville, or I took probably not on his report yet because I haven't given him my report. Uh, we have a room where we have stuff that I can give away stuff to. Uh, quick, John Wesley said that the world is my parish. So everybody that we come in contact with is our parish. So we're allowed to go uh, wander around the, in the way outside of our area. So okay, thank you Larry for that. He'll be back at 11. If you get a lot more, he'll come back at 11. Uh, uh, let me go skip the prayer request real quick. Uh, birthday, so real quick, in case she's watching today, she popped up on my Facebook, Joanne Hostler. I think I, I don't think I pronounced that quite right, and Joanne's birthday today, and I know she's watching this service or the 11 o'clock service, so happy birthday, Joanne. Uh, any other birthdays? Man, y'all, look. Wake up! Do we need to stand up and look around a little bit? Uh, Sean's birthday? 62, you retired yet? <laughs> uh, we'll talk in the office later, right? <laughs> well, happy birthday. Uh, so, any others? Well, the one thing I would do, I don't really call people out, uh, and I'm not going to call them out, but look at the beautiful sight on the right side of the very back of the church. That family with those babies here in the church. <laughs> amen. Can we, can we get an amen there? Uh, so, Sean and Joanne, and those at home, if you would stand. Somebody knows how to play it. Not we're going to sing acapella. We'll sing Happy Birthday real quick. Y'all sing a Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday. church reached out, people were coming to Christ, they went to the ocean and were baptized. In California the same way. So there is good still in our country, in our world. So we want to praise God for the good that's still there. So with that, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves as we've come. Lord, our, our mission report, we thank you for people like Larry and, and those who donate Lord, that those who donate, that we make it possible to reach those, Lord. And Lord, I know this week the phone rang, and it rang quite a bit, about people in need. People that needed a hotel room or a partial pay. People that needed gas. People that needed car repair for a tire. And Lord, through your resources, we were able to help somebody in dire need. And Lord, we, we help by just showing up and being presence, the presence of ministry. And for all those ministries, for the energy and the excitement you give us, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for all that's going right in our country. Lord, for people coming to know you as Lord and Savior, Lord. For churches and people reaching out to those that many of us would not want to talk to. Lord, we just ask you to thank you for, for those that are coming to, to you, Lord. 
Lord, we lift up our country. We lift up all of our, our, all of our leaders, our executive leaders, Lord, uh, from the President to Congress, the Senate, all the way down to our local leaders uh, from the State Senate and, and Congress, our, our governor, to our local here, Lord, our mayor and city council, Lord, our police department, Lord, and the fire department, Lord, and our military. We lift them all up to you today, Lord. And Lord, we just come here humbly before you as we hear your word, as we sing your songs, Lord. Let us be, let us feel your presence in our lives. We ask you this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have the wrong bulletin. Uh, time, we're going to do a... a Team is going to come up to the Children's Church, and we are also going to do uh, 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 ties and offerings. If you, two men would come up, please. about God, where it comes from, the foundation. So I got me some study books. and used to in school, I know not anymore hardly, you get books, but sometimes you still get real books. And you have to actually read them to know what's in them. So as I started studying some of the Jewish things and some of the history of our Bible, I thought, wow, I'm reading and I'm reading, and you know, you read a book, and you get knowledge, and it gets in your head, and then you're like, wow, got a lot up here in the head going on, got to think about it. But Jesus talked some to us about his scripture in Matthew 7. He talked to us about knowledge and then about wisdom. Because, man, I think, when you read all these books, and you're like, well, I'm really smart. Not necessarily. Because Jesus says in Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then in 26, he says, But, that big word, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. So, I mean, I could, it made me think, I can read these books Put all that knowledge in my head. But if I never take that knowledge and put it to use, what good was it? It never becomes wisdom. The good thing about studying and reading and putting those things in our head is that we've got to actually apply them. We've got to practice them. And if we practice them, we'll get better at it. It's just like anything else. If you're a baseball or if you're playing the drums, Okay, some has. If he never practiced, he'll never get better. We only get better by practicing. But Jesus says that it's like building a house on sand. And we know when we go to the beach and that water, I saw Hallie B playing around last week at the beach. It was so cute that that water, when it came up, it washed that sand away. So if our house is built on just sand, when that storm comes and that water comes, it's going to fall. So if all we ever do is just read, it's going to just wash away. We'll forget if we never apply it, if we never practice it. But then he says the person that builds their house on solid rock, the rock, it becomes solid. It can't be washed away. And that's the same thing with our, our knowledge. Once we put it in our head and we start practicing it and put it into our everyday life, it becomes solid. And when it's become solid, it can't be washed away, no matter what's going on in our world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you do give us knowledge. You give us the ability to take that knowledge. And we can put it in our head, Lord. 
But let us not stop there. Let us turn it into wisdom. Lord, and that wisdom comes when we practice it, when we apply it, when we make it part of our everyday life. Let us practice it just like we would anything else, whether it's sports, whether it's music, whether it's just anything that we want to be better at. Let us put it into practice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stay in praise.
He started off class one with this statement that I have kept with me forever since then. If, you, if what you believe isn't true, do you want to know the truth? The answer for most people is actually no. Because we have learned, with the things that we have learned, especially Bible stories and different things, when we were a kid, it's hard for us to concept something different. And so that's the way uh, he started that off. And, and so with that, we're going to come, we're almost at the done. This is the third part of a four-part series on the, uh, the kingdom of God is life. And what we know here is, an overview real quick, what we know is we're not talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, uh, that is the, what we're going to when we're done with this life. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven that is here on earth right now with us. And so we started the series off at Matthew chapter 13. Next week will be Matthew chapter 22. It actually jumps a big gap there. But Matthew 20, it started off at 13. It was start off with the wheat and tares. Uh, or weeds, it depends on the version of your Bible there. And, and we learn from that, what we learn from that is that the sower, the good sower, is Jesus. Uh, the, the people that are doing the sowing is the Christians, you and I. Uh, the field is the world, and the enemy, the tares or the weeds, the enemy is the devil or the sons of the devil. And, and so we must know that. Then the next set of parables was the uh, the hidden treasure in the pearl. The field again is the world, and uh, the perils of the Gentiles. And, and here's the meaning of those two, real quick: the cost, the cost of the church. What did it cost God to start the church? Everything. The death of His Son. Amen. I heard that amen in the back. Did you all hear that? Praise the Lord for that. Uh, somebody's paying attention there. Uh, but, and, and so we, we see that there. So it leads us to today. It leads us to today's prayer because it's all really one long story. And Jesus will get to that at the very end of this. So starting off at Matthew chapter 13, verse 47. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind which when it was full, they drew it to shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessel, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing the gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Had you understood all these things? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, and, and what we kind of know is he turns to the scribes that were there with him. Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a house, like a householder who brings out the treasure, things new and old. This is the word of God for the people of God. So here we go in the, the, the terminology here. You need another terminology for those who are writing with words mean differently sometimes in, in the prophetic world or we go along there. Uh, C, C, and I mentioned this before, C is going to equal Gentile world. C is going to end, 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 equal to Gentile world. In Revelation it says the beast comes from the sea. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer or the fastest person or anything else. I'm, just, I'm honest with you here. Uh, and so for the longest time, I used, when I used to go to the ocean, I mean, I'm an adult, but I used to go to the ocean and, and wonder, is it going to come from the Atlantic? Is it going to come from the Pacific? Is it going to come from the beast? You know, from the Indian Ocean? Where, where's it coming from? The sea equals Gentile nations. Gentile nation. So we, we need to know that. And, and so the illustration of this story and what they would do in this time frame, the, the fishermen in this time frame would do, they would take two boats, they'd get this big net, they call it a drag net, and have big weights on the bottom of it. <clears throat> we think about this, they did this without engines, by the way. Uh, they, 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 and they would go so far apart from each other and they would sail dragging everything from the bottom of the sea, everything, fish, rocks, turtles, whatever was there, and pull it up, and then turn it to shore, and they would pull this big net up shore, 
and they would sit there literally and keep the good fish. The bad fish, depends on the Bible version you have, some Bible versions have it in there. They actually had a fire going, and they would throw the bad fish into the fire. Sometimes they'd use them for uh, planting, and, you know, for fertilizing and things like that. The purpose of not throwing them back into the ocean or back into the sea was so they wouldn't continue to grow and eat food and stuff. And, and, and so that, that's, that's the actual the story that Jesus is refer referencing to there. Uh, but so, what we need to understand about this story, uh, what we need to understand uh, about this story runs really back to the beginning parable of, of the wheats and the tares. These two parables, parables are parallel to each other because they mean the same thing. One set of people is talking to farmers, the other set of people is talking to fishermen, and he's using an analogy that they can use, that they can know. Uh, I do a devotion sometimes for, uh, until it closed down, Thunder Roads Magazine and things else. What, uh, I'm not going to use uh, farming stuff in a motorcycle world. I'm going to use things that relate to motorcycles so I can go there because that's what people understand. If Jeff was to give a devotion with golfing, uh, he would use something about golf and not something else. Because that's what he understands. Fishermen would do that same thing. So we're going to use what we're going to do. That's what Jesus did here, but the parables are the same. The good and the bad are together from the beginning. Understand that from Genesis chapter 3, which we know it's before chapter 3, the good and bad was together. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 is where uh, Jesus, they got Jesus uh, the, the God has everybody lined up, Adam, Eve, the devil, and he chastises them all for sinning. Uh, and, and so they're all together. They're all together here. And so we must realize in the world in which we live, the good and bad are always going to mingle together. We're always going to be mingled together. Not everybody, uh, not everybody has your best intentions at, at heart. Not everybody, you know, we got to sometimes be careful who we're dealing with and what we're dealing with there. Uh, the net equals the invitation to Christ. Everyone is invited into the relationship with Jesus. Understand this real quick. Uh, we, yesterday we talked about, we had an annual conference yesterday online, and we, and we talked about racism. So let me bring that up real quick on that subject. Just real quick on the subject of racism. Every person that was conceived, every person that was conceived, I don't care what country they live from, what their financial background is, what language they speak, or anything else is made in the image of God. Amen. And if we show disrespect because of color, because of financial status, because of origin, where, wherever else is, we, not them, are in sin, and we will answer for that sin one day. Amen. God says, be, God is the respecter of no people. We are all created in His image. And so therefore, treat people whether they're saved or not saved, as people of God. Treat each one as if you were treating Jesus, regardless of what they look like or where they come from. Uh, it would make life a lot easier, would it not? Uh, and, and so, but the net, back to the net real quick, is the invitation. All people, all humanity has been invited into the relationship. All people have been invited into this relationship with God. Uh, the, the invitation goes out all throughout the world. And with modern technology, the invitation is literally have gone through the world. And so, what we need to understand here is like the good fish, the bad fish, they're all together until the end. They're all swimming together until the end. The wheats and the tares are all together until the end. Everybody has this decision to make. And there's always time. As long as there is breath, there is time. I talked to a couple that, that was talking about getting divorced and they were telling about the other things, but I am not a good marriage counselor. And both of them said, well, we don't really want a divorce. Well, that's easy. Don't get one. <laughs> if you don't want to get one, don't get one. I mean, it's super easy. As long as there is marriage and hope and breath in that marriage, there's, there, it is, there's still hope. As long as there's breath in your life, or your friend's life, or your neighbor's life, or your family's life, and they don't know Christ, there's still hope. Remember that. There's, there's hope. God doesn't want nobody Nobody to perish without knowing his love. The God, the God's mission is to put us all in heaven. And so when we come to realize that that's not always going to be the case, and I'm not going to read it, but Revelation chapter 2 through 3 
you, when you read the seven churches there, there's some people that Jesus talked about. There's some of these people, um, like the Nickelodeons, or, and it's not the TV show, by the way, uh, and, and things like this, and they're not going to make it. So understand that in the church, not everybody's going to make it. Uh, everybody has the opportunity. Everybody's been given the opportunity. But what I fear in our world today, and this is where my fundamental Baptist comes out in me, where I fear in the world today, especially in some of the other churches, that we have been taught a soft doctrine that is not true. Not fully true. It's only partially true. And, and so with that, but there's coming a day. There is coming a day. Understand this one thing. And this is the days of Noah. Everything was going along. People were marrying and being married, and, and all the kids were being born, and all these things were going along. And they laughed at Noah. And it was like 150 years to build that ship. They laughed. I mean, and if y'all have been to Kentucky to see the ark, it's not a little boat. Uh, you just you've seen this for miles around. Plus, they had to cut the trees down and stuff to help build it. Uh, not a ship. And, and, and what happened? On the day that God said, the day that God had appointed, the animals hop in, Moses and his family hops in, God shuts the door, God seals it with pitch, and the flood fall comes, and many, many people, many people don't make it. They, they, they laugh, they talk, they, they, many of them might have been able to talk religion and, and knew who God was. Let me be clear about this. I don't have a date. I'm not a date set. The end is coming. Whether it happens in our lifetime or not, I don't know. But Revelation chapter 14, starting off at verse 14, says, Then I look, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and on his hand a sharp sickle. On the other an angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him, who sat on the cloud, Thrust your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust, thrust his sickle, the earth, and the earth was reaped. Gathered, is what we can say there. Verse 17, chapter 14, verse 17 of the book of Revelation. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, and the power over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust your sharp sickle and gather the cluster of vine of the earth. And the grapes are fully ripe. The angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the winepress of the wrath of God. This is the end times story. Some are making it, some are not. Some will go to heaven, some will be in an everlasting hell. It's, it's the truth, people. I can't, I can't put it no other way. Uh, it's the truth. And our job as the church is to be the, the world is our parish. It's to go out and, and to do all things. And when we come back to that Bible verse there, I can come back to it real quick. Uh, when we come back to that Bible verse, uh, Matthew chapter, but I did not mark that page. Why did I do that? Uh, Matthew chapter 13, real quick, 52 is the verse. So if y'all may follow along there. Uh, 52, then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a house holder who brings out the treasure of things new and old. He's talking to the scribes. The scribes were the lawyers, if you will. Uh, they were the law keepers. They were the ones that, that studied the scripture in and out. And when the Pharisees or somebody else had a question about it, the rabbis or somebody else, they went to the scribes. They were the ones that goes along, and they called them the housekeepers, or the householder. And what Jesus is telling them, and I want to put this into those who are teaching, and to those who are preaching, or those who are in any kind of leadership position. Let me bring this out. He says, who brings out, do you understand what I'm saying? He's talking to the householders there. He's talking to the leaders of the church. He says, bring out the new and the old. The new being the New Testament, the new gospel of Jesus Christ. The old is the Old Testament. The old did not pass away. The old was fulfilled and it is being fulfilled. We need the old to understand the new. Amen? Uh, we need the old to understand the new. Uh, so we need to understand. We need to understand that the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, is important. Not just the New Testament. I know people say, I can stick around the New Testament because I don't understand the Old Testament. 
I don't know, if, if you don't understand, you have problems understanding the New Testament, read the Old Testament, because it's all in the New Testament. Uh, there's no other way to do that, is, is you need to read the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. And so all, all things are there. And so I just want to real quick, I know we're getting short on time, so I will just read one uh, to you. But who's not going? There's a question. Uh, and I thought about doing a whole sermon. I might come back. We've got a Sunday. We're not much going on. I may come back. Who's not going? See, so many people have said, oh, I claim in the name of Jesus, you know, be saved. There's a difference in the Wesleyan tradition between saved and salvation. I won't get into that now. But, but who does the Bible say? And remember, especially the New Testament is written to the church. It's not written to the people outside the church. It's written to the church. You now we benefit on the outside, but it is one. But, uh, so the two scriptures that, are, that I was going to read, but I'm only going to read one for the amount of time. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Then the other one, if you're taking notes, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 through 7. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, Heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, robberies, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, as I have told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, forgiveness. If you do not forgive the, the sins of your brothers or sisters, I will not forgive your sins. How many sins can you go to, to heaven with? None. Uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 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 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5, Paul says to examine yourself. Paul says to examine yourself. And let me pop up one more, uh, uh, I'll just read it from memory here real quick. Two more circles, two more uh, things. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, and Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Real quick there. Matthew chapter 7, 13, this is the narrow road, only the narrow road is hard. Being a Christian, the two is hardest things that I have ever been. I'm going to lump up, I could say, I could say three. They're all equally as hard. Being a Christian man uh, and trying to live my life to the Word of God, it is difficult. Anybody else try that? It's difficult. Number two is being a fairly decent husband, and I fail multiple times at that. We won't get into that stuff. We won't get into Larry's problems right now. And being a fairly decent father. They are hard things to do. It is to be the example of your family on, on a good, but a good Christian man and a husband and, and father should look like. Those are hard, and I'm, probably all the men here can probably agree we have failed somewhere along the way, have we not? Thank goodness for forgiveness. But back in chapter 7, verse 13, this is the narrow road. It's hard, and only a few find it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it says, Lord, Lord, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, later the kingdom of heaven. And I love this argument because the person argues back and says, but God, I prophesied your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed people in your name. The people come to Christ in your, because of me in, in your name. And Jesus said, if I could get somebody to do those four things, we're going to need a finance committee and a trustee committee because we're going to need to build a bigger church. All the greatness you're doing there, if you don't have a God will use you, but if you don't have a relationship with Him, get away from me, you lawless person. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So my, my thing this week is, as we go out and we're trying to do good, we're trying to do that, Jesus says, you know, we'll talk about Larry here, and think, those who do, do this to the least of these, those to the least of these, has done it for me too. Helping people, helping people that are down. What are we to do? What are we to do here as we get ready to close this service up? What are we to do? So what's the answer? You need to examine yourself, as, as Paul says. Examine yourself. Do you have a love for God? I mean, he says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. The call comes today. Sell everything you have. Pack up your family. Next Sunday, I need you in Zimbabwe. I don't even know where Zimbabwe is. Uh, or some other town somewhere in Africa or somewhere else. Where Nigeria is probably a good one right now. Where the Muslim population is coming. They're coming into churches. They're killing Christians by the dozens at a time. You're probably not going to come back. 
So kiss everything the body you have in the States and let's go. Do you love God with your whole heart, soul, and mind where nothing in this world matters, just what he asks you to do? I feel, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm struggling. I'm struggling here with this, so I'll just be honest with you. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Why is Larry and I, we both have a passion for people. People need us. We're the best for God to help. It doesn't matter what status. Larry forgot to pay the report. We've helped with hotel room this week. We've helped with the tire this week. We've helped with the battery this week. People need help. We're in a world of lost and lost hope. And they need people that will love them in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you're holding hatred or bitterness in your life, if you're holding on to something that is ungodly in your life, I'm going to, as we play the song and Christian's going to talk to us in just a second, I'm going to ask you, this is the day to get rid of it. Amen.
pour your Holy Spirit down afresh on us, Lord. Appear to those that are at home, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit fall afresh on us. That when we walk out of here, we walk away different than we come in, Lord. Lord, seal us with the Holy Spirit. Send us out forth into the world to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And Lord, we ask you this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And with great excitement at home and here, everywhere.